name is Claudia, Claudia Molinari, and with Matteo we are We Are Muesli. We are here to present to talk about what we call Games of Simplicity, and we will show you why we chose this name. So, as I said, we are called We Are Muesli, and uh, as you can see, I had different hairstyle, but um, we are a duo based in Milan, and we focus on narrative and historical games. Uh, Matteo is a is a the game and narrative designer. I'm the game and visual designer. We are here to present a game that we made uh, throughout uh, last year for Beijing Design Week. Um, the name of the game is Si He Yuan. It's a um, Chinese word. The game is outside. You can have a Peak after the talk, and uh, it's a China-inspired game, uh, and uh, precisely about one particular thing about China. Uh, it was commissioned by um, my dear friend, but also great architect Fabrizio Gurrado, who lives in Beijing, for, as I said, the Beijing Design Week of 2015. And uh, we chose this name because Fabrizio was concerned about what was happening to this particular situation of archi this architectural problem that China and Beijing, above all Beijing, is facing. Sihei Yuan means courtyard, and uh, courtyard, Sihei Yuan, were considered, were defined this type of houses, very historical houses, where like uh, the 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 like the the most important people of the of the family was living in front of the house, the the one on the side. So all the families were like um, gathered around this perimeter, and they were all sharing things inside the courtyard. And things like uh, literally. Uh, anything like from the laundry to like playing games to eat together so that fu that function of the courtyard was the core function of uh, conviviality and also was the core value for aggregation for sharing like emotions and uh, sharing uh, experiences now the Sihe Yuan in China look more like this and um, but the real problem why this architect invited us to to help him in in promoting uh, the the value of Sihe Yuan, it's because this is happening in Beijing, like massive, like uh, massive buildings and um, massive constructions, and the whole like uh, uh, the the whole value of staying together now it's a little bit like uh, scattered so it's a nice story and uh, uh, and it, it's uh, it's a very like uh, um, honorable uh, mission the one to try to solve like an architecture project and because we are familiar with stories and through the past we have been like uh, uh, we have been doing we did different projects uh, narrative based um, my friend thought that we were the right people to contact the, the right people to to do this kind of of project talking about what is happening in this uh, massive edifications of buildings in Beijing but because of this knowledge that we had in the past, we understood that we were not actually able to do a narrative games about about this project. Because first, first of all, we don't speak Chinese, and as a duo that focus uh, their their projects in narrative, it was impossible for us to make a video game, a narrative branching narrative video games in a language that was not either English or Italian. So we gave ourselves a brief, a brief that uh, helped us to tackle the problem. First of all, tackle the CUN architectural issue, overcome the language ba boundaries, the cultural boundaries, because uh, how could we possibly make a game uh, 
a narrative game uh, if we don't actually understand the, the culture and the context. And thirdly, work as an on-site installation. My friend uh, Fabrizio was... Um, he, he really wanted to re reproduce the disaggregation value that is actually missing now in modern in modern houses. So, so yeah, we 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 gave ourselves basically these free uh, kind of like creative constraints in order to get to the actual design of this uh, of this of this game, and so we we started like making some research about what what what's happening actually to those uh, uh original uh, architecture patterns those CAUN uh best chance they got turned uh, into places like this sorry the the slide is a bit dark but uh, they, they are turned into like uh hyper gentrified uh, luxury restaurants uh, or fashion hotels uh, so they are preserving actually the structure and of of the building but they're completely uh, changing the social function which was uh, about like families living together and sharing a common space uh, making research about CAUN, so we found out that these beautiful architectures are all over the place. There are uh, CAUN versions made with Lego, there are CAUNs inside uh, Minecraft. Uh, but what we felt that was always missing uh, uh, was uh, this, uh, the people, the people of China. We were lucky enough, uh, uh, even before uh, last year, to spend one month in Beijing, uh, uh, 2011. And we were amazed uh, at the sight of how Chinese people uh, and Beijing, pe Beijing people uh, in particular uh, uh, share the spaces uh, and share the street uh, and are able to turn even the smallest uh, public park uh, into, for instance, a uh, uh, ping pong uh, court. And these pictures uh, uh, were taken by me, who uh, I thought I was actually pretty good at ping pong uh, for European standards, but then I realized that uh, ev ev basically every one of these people, like uh, for four-year-old children or 80-year-old women were much better than me so I decided to take pictures instead of actually playing ping pong so um, and uh, so yeah the people the people uh, the people of China uh, love to uh, play actually and also like play in the streets and share uh, uh, spaces uh, spaces of play like this these are pictures of people playing mostly uh, mahjong the the um, the game and so we 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 thought that this was a very interesting uh, take that we could uh, give to the to to this game so how people interact with each other how people collaborate how people talk with each other while playing uh, while playing a game and that was uh, something we were already uh, interested into experimenting with 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 games uh, like this for instance which was uh, a game we prototype at global game jam 2015 it was called we'll meet again it, in, it was all based on human interaction and uh, uh, collaborating with the player in front of you in order to share and exchange hints in order to solve some puzzles so this social element uh, and this uh, this this element of uh, how people communicate with each other while playing a game was definitely something we wanted to 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 focus on with uh, with uh, with CAUN. So back to the layout of the of the CAUN. Uh, as Claudia was saying, there was this communal area in the middle and four individual areas uh, all around that. So we thought, oh, this could be looking back at the brief uh, the the solution for this uh, creative uh, uh, equation and this combination of ingredients may be a four player abstract uh, and abstract in order to overcome that language barrier that claudia was talking about uh, local cooperative multiplayer game so this was the the the, the idea that we that we that we had uh, we decided to make this game uh, not by ourselves but together with this other awesome uh, uh, Dutch game uh, developer called Aaron Koenig, uh, who was already into, who is uh, into especially local multiplayer uh, games uh, like this. You may have heard about 
a few of them they're pretty like weird and wacky uh local multiplayer experiences and together with him uh we 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 thought talking about abstraction we thought of this what 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 is a, a better example of uh, uh, abstraction and perfection actually in design uh, than, than, than Tetris. Tetris is the absolute perfection, I guess, is the, uh, the, the equivalent of some perfect uh, uh, of what, what, what are called uh, in like traditional uh, product design, like perfect objects uh, like, like, like a compass. You can, you can actually design something which makes a circle better than a super simple uh, uh, tool uh, like this. Uh, and which is a perfect, uh, a, a perfect uh, object for solving a certain problem or solving a certain function. So, uh, talking about Tetris, uh, we thought of, of the thousands uh, of variations of Tetris that Tetris had uh, throughout the years. And one of the lesser known, but it was actually actually the first variation of Tetris made by Tetris own uh, uh, original maker Alexei Pajitnov was this one Weltris where the pieces were falling uh, uh, like this and there was this uh, this uh, courtyard I would say in, uh, in in the middle and we realized how similar was the structure of, of Weltris uh, compared to the layout uh, of the CAUN which we which we saw before so the original idea was to turn this this uh, this uh, this uh, architectural layout uh, into our gameplay field for uh, for the game and i don't know where you were that day actually but i made the sketch by myself with excel and you can realize how i suck with drawing or visual elements and uh, so the idea was to turn uh, to have uh, a communal area in the middle and having a four individual areas controlled by each players on each side of the uh, of the communal area in the middle and the original idea was oh we may like pay tribute to tetris by having actual uh, tetris pieces uh, falling uh, towards the communal area and people may pass Tetris pieces to each other by pushing uh, a piece uh, uh, out of their of, of of each area. The piece would have turned into another into another area. So the idea was okay. We may uh, prototype this sort of cooperative version, uh, four-player multiplayer version of, uh, of 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 Tetris. But then we thought uh, that that uh, first of all, uh, why should we? I mean, Tetris is perfect, as we, as I said before. Why 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 should we try to change uh, something like Tetris? So we decided to reduce these ideas that we had in mind and simplify them. And so this was the original uh, uh, the the original and still uh, the gameplay of uh, of the game so instead instead of having uh, tetris pieces we decided to have single tiles like that of four different colors and uh, the goal of the game would have been to uh, make uh, the tile fall into uh, frames of the correspondent color so that was the idea it would have been a falling block games where people would have would have had to share the pieces together in order to fulfill the entire the the entire uh, central uh, central grid uh, we found some further inspiration uh, uh, regarding the, the layout of the game, for instance, in the Chinese uh, theory of, of colors. Uh, Chinese culture is all about like associations of different uh, of of, uh, of different elements. So, as you can see from this from this uh, table here, uh, we have uh, uh, each. Uh, um, each color is associated to a certain uh, uh, direction. So green uh, uh, east, red and south, yellow center, white west, and black north. So we already have like our five uh, uh, colors for the game, and the color orientation, which is still in the game, uh, is a, is a, tr uh, a translation, I would say, of of, uh, of the Chinese theory of of color and of uh, and of elements and uh, the idea was to have like first design was like flat uh, uh, tiles uh, and also having adding uh, one further tile the yellow one which had to work uh, in order to uh, delete uh, any tile that had been uh, previously placed so that if you had made a mistake uh, you could uh, uh, delete 
uh, any tile with a yellow tile and then having uh, the frames uh, and the bold brick tile uh, signaling what brick tile should be placed uh, on uh, on the wall first flat version of uh, of uh, of the visual design of the game uh we were missing something then I came back from whatever I was when he made the Excel and uh, um, we thought that it was, even though the game is super simple, looks super simple, uh, we wanted to, to contextualize a little bit the Chinese aspect that it was missing. So I was already familiar, I'm actually a big fan of patterns graphic patterns and uh, I already worked in previous games uh, exploiting the, the power of patterns to express different different situations so I decided to look into the Chinese culture and of course Manjong it's one of the most uh, relevant reference uh, but in Manjong every element uh, every little details on the tile is actually uh, as a meaning so I couldn't just like take that and put it into my into the game I had to reconfigure a, a, a language that somehow resembled the Chinese culture but in some sort of way meant nothing so um, I looked into mask I'm a big fan of masks some of you guys know that and uh, also Matteo is a big fan of mask and uh, yeah, wrestling mask. I, 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 I'm a fan of other masks. But um, so I looked into masks and in the Peking Opera, there are so many masks and every mask has a meaning like, uh, I don't know, fear, love and so on. So I deconstructed all the masks from the, Pe the Peking Opera and I uh, constructed a new language that resembled the Chinese like configuration but as I said has no meaning at all so uh, it's just a pure decorative purpose and this is what how the graphic look like and uh, yeah and then another another aspect came out because the game as I said it does look super simple and we wanted we didn't want to make another Tetris we wanted to make something that could look like at first you could say yes it's a Tetris but when you're actually playing it you realize that it's not so we want to have very simple um, um, like rules like first rule when the, the block is falling you have to put it in the right frame easy second rule you can pass the bricks from one area to the other super easy third rule yellow pieces erase cancel mistakes and that's again another super easy um, rule and then this, this, the scope of the game is to complete as you can see from the previous uh, quadrant to complete the CAUN with the right tiles in the right place as easy as it may sound if you don't collaborate this thing is not gonna work so this was the original setup we were in the in a Sihe Yuan in China in Beijing and uh, we presented it like this flat screen uh, and uh, we started to monitor how the people was affected by the game and uh, and having the first feedbacks and the first thing that jumped into our mind was related to time when we were questioning our uh, players how they felt by playing how long have they been playing with the game uh, their reaction was really bizarre because for real some people could have taken like 20 25 minutes to finish just one level but the perception that they had was like they they were playing it was like 10 minutes they were playing so this was a very positive uh, reaction that we had and also the aggregation of the people was really was really working so we uh, we went ahead and we started to encounter other problems was it me or was it you should I okay sorry uh, because we are doing this kind of Albano and Romina thing and um, I'm sorry but um, so <laughs> So at some point, uh, obviously, bags arrived 
and uh, and what we did we turned the bags all the problems that we found into the game and there were a lot of problems we we turned them into variations so for example there was a moment that we had this very major bag that we couldn't uh, we couldn't pass the pieces actually we could pass the pieces only counterclockwise and this was not designed at first at first it was just a falling block with um you had to move the piece and enter them into the right grid but then we say hey why not making this into a feature so we turned all the bags in the game and we transformed them into features and the features uh, became uh, this uh, this mask that you have at the centerpiece of the game uh, that tells you what is going to happen, what kind of change of the rules is going to happen after a cent cer certain amount of seconds. And this led us to another issue related to emotions because the fact that we use the bags into features uh, like gave a very interesting twist to the game. Uh, people started to have even more fun and um, so we started to get crazy and produce a lot of say all the bags that we had in the game and said oh how can we turn the fact that at some point the computer is gonna crash yeah we can make a we can definitely make something out of it so yeah and uh well i'll keep on going <laughs> And so after after the initial ideas of having just one grid that expands and then expands, then we said, hey, we could organize all these bags and information that we had and start to produce different grids and different levels and different different layers of experience. Uh, so just to recap about the game, uh, and the game, it's a very... It's a, it's a key about what we want to talk uh, next, is that how we tackle a problem. We transformed the story, the story that my friend told us about this architectural issue into a co-op experience. We tackled the language boundaries into like uh, abstraction, like a uh, trying to bring the narrative out of the game, try to make the people the narrative of the game. And uh, finally, uh, not every bad is really bad. In this case, uh, bags became our gameplay variations. All these things, we couldn't reach it without a, 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 big, a, um, a big job about simplifying, so simplicity for this game is the keyword of the, the, the success. And uh, talking about simplicity, I'll pass the mic to... Yeah, look, looking back at, at, at the design process and at develop and the development process of CA1, we realized uh, how our design choices were somehow dictated by this need of simplicity. So we thought back of uh, this guy here, John Maeda, American designer and technology, who actually wrote this beautiful book, uh, 2006, so 10 years ago, uh, uh, specifically called The Laws of Simplicity. Uh, it's a book some of you may be familiar with, especially if you're into like user interface, user interaction, uh, and, and so on. And so we, we tried to look back both at our design choices and at other examples of, of, of video games, uh, of mostly independent video games, which, which are the ones that we uh, care more of, and trying to figure out if there was some possible relation between the 10 laws of simplicity that John Maeda uh, designed uh, 10 years ago, 10 very simple uh, rules, so we'll go through them uh, now and see if there are, they can be somehow uh, inspiring or have been, have possibly been inspirational for, uh, for examples of, of, of video games. 
So we 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 try to see for each uh, uh, for each of Maeda's rules uh, uh, some examples of of individual games that somehow uh, represent uh, uh, embody uh, Maeda's uh, laws of simplicity and tackles uh, this issue which is so hard to reproduce uh, but so like gratifying also in terms of gaming of gaming experience so from loads of simplicity to games of of uh, of, uh, of simplicity and the first rule we already talked about re reduction uh, while we were talking about ca1 and how we try to simplify everything to reduce the controls to reduce uh, uh, the design of the tiles and so on Maeda's rules say the simplest way to achieve simplicity is through thoughtful uh, uh, reduction. And an example, a beautiful example of a game that makes exactly uh, this thing here is this one, uh, Desert Golfing. Uh, have you heard about it? It's a casual game, came out a couple of years ago, 2014. And it's one of the most like transcendental games uh, I've ever seen because it's a game that has basically nothing, not even no options, no menu, nothing but a golf ball and a desert to go from hole to hole to hole and you just have to uh, uh, swipe the phone in order to uh, change the uh, the speed where you can hit the ball and try to send it into 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 the holes and it goes on like this and this and this through all these procedurally generated uh, 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 landscapes it may sound completely uh, like ab abstract uh, and it feels like there is nothing inside the game but there are a lot of examples of of players it's been a pretty successful games a, a pretty successful game actually that have been completely absorbed by this uh, completely reduced uh, experience uh, and it's a game that uh, even though we we are into as we said like narrative games and games with a lot of like story and text and this is uh, we, we may say the complete opposite of the previous games that we had made we see this game as a perfect example of reducing all the elements in your game into something like like uh, like this so perfect example of uh, the law of reducing uh, uh justin smith who's the guy who made the game even tweeted uh, about uh, even tweeted this picture here saying oh this is the entirety of my desert golfing design notes uh, and i don't know if you can actually see the sketches but it's just a few lines uh, drawn uh, on a on a sketchbook and uh, so yeah what a great example of 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 of, of absolute simplicity Organize. Organization makes the system of many appear fewer. So many elements, uh, I mean, com how to like organize complexity. You may have a, a complexity of ingredients, uh, but if you organize them the right way, they may appear uh, fewer and thus more, more uh, simple. And the example is this uh, strange game installation here which is called the line wobbler by robin baumgartner baumgarten uh, which is a uh, one-dimensional dungeon crawler actually so you have this neon uh, 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 string uh, with uh, with with leds uh, so it's it's basically a one-dimensional game you just have a sequence of of, of dots and of led lights uh, and according to the color of the light and the way these lights uh, light up uh, or they turn off, off and on, you are actually moving uh, by means of this strange uh, uh, controller here. You're moving your character trying to get to the end of each dungeon from level to level to level. So what Robin made was actually being able to organize all the elements that you have that you may have in a dungeon crawler like game like a character enemies uh, and pools of lava or explosions into simple dots and a very in a single and a single line of that so it's just based on how you perceive these these uh, these dots and these lights uh, on uh, on the string a pretty extreme example of uh, organizing uh, complexity into just one line of dots and actually being able to make a game and a very fun game out of this so time savings in time feel like simplicity this is what uh, john maeda's rule uh, low sorry john maeda's law says and uh, 
talking about savings in time, the example that came to our mind was a game like this, which is uh, Super Hexagon by Terry Kavanagh, 2012, not a very uh, brand new game, but a very uh, great example of a game which at, at the same time is very hard. It is one of the hardest games uh, that you may try to play. And some some matches last, uh, I mean, the first time that you try to play with Super Hexagon, you will probably die after like, I guess, two or three seconds, uh, something like that. And uh, so it's... Uh, it's, it may sound like the opposite of like saving your time, but the game is actually doing this and making a and making a, uh, your especially your first matches last like two, three, four, five seconds uh, because it's a very, very, very hard game. You end up uh, trying to play another and another and another and another game. So it's it's a very addictive uh, addictive game, even though it's one of the hardest games uh, that uh, that uh, have uh, ever been made. So keeping uh, for instance, keeping uh, the, 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 the duration of a single play session as short as possible, like in Super Hexagon, uh, which, as, as I said, is just a matter of seconds, uh, definitely makes you feel that you can improve, that you can do better, and that you, can, and that you definitely want to play one more game. Uh, learn. Knowledge makes everything simpler. simpler. Uh, this is... Uh, uh, pretty important uh, uh, rule or law for entire game design. We may all have heard about the importance of having uh, like an in-game tutorial inside the game so that your player will learn how the game works. Uh, so having this knowledge, uh, will feel the player will feel better at playing, uh, at playing, uh, at playing the game. And uh, this is a pretty weird example, but one I'm pretty fond of. Uh, Increpare, also known as Stephen uh, Lavelle, is this game maker, a British game maker who recently made a beautiful puzzle game called Stephen Sausage Roll and on his website uh, increpare.com I guess or yeah I think it is .com. There are about like hundreds of free experiments that he made that he's been making throughout the years. This is just one example of, of these free games that I definitely recommend you to, 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 to give a try to. And in this game, uh, we are that small man, there is this small maze, a princess maybe to save <laughs> over there, and those three other uh, non-playing characters on top. Uh, the, the game itself has no tutorial, but that's what the game is about, uh, being also called the promises. So each of those three guys over there, if you walk to them, uh, tells you something like that. If you swear to me to never again in your life to move east, uh, I will give you this key, right to accept, left to cancel. So those three characters dictate the rules uh, of how you can actually play the game because if you accept and then you like for instance move east again the other uh, two characters will not give you the key and you need three key one two three in order to save the princess so you have to uh, stay faithful to those three promises that those three characters are making to you it was a brilliant very simple but brilliant idea of how uh, you were actually learning to play the game, not through a tutorial, but straight, that, that was just a game. It's just a very small experiment, but the way it works uh, is definitely a great small experimental example. Again, I'm recommended to you to take a look at it. Uh, quickly go through the uh, other uh, laws. Uh, differences, simplicity and complexity uh, need uh, each other. And this is a great recent example of this game called uh, Reigns. Uh, my as law is about uh, if you try to make something very simple uh, inside uh, like a market for instance uh, that uh, has many like complex uh, products uh, you may end up being different and being offering something different to 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 your players in this case and uh, this game is a great uh, uh, is a great example of a narrative game where you interact with lots of lots of characters uh, and you just the controls work just left and right 
you swipe on one side or on, a, or on another side in order to make your choices you're the ruler of this kingdom and you're actually saying uh, uh, and you're actually taking decisions about uh, how your uh, your uh, your um, your kingdom should work uh, and you just have one or another uh, or or, uh, or another choice just binary choices but there's so much complexity behind uh, all these uh, all these uh, all this story uh, uh, quickly through the last uh, laws we have contest what lies in the periphery of simplicity is definitely not uh, peripheral and uh, this example of uh, by Simogo, uh, Sweden independent studio, is a great example of a game which looks completely simple but had so many hidden meanings and hidden things behind uh, behind uh, behind its uh, its uh, its design. Emotions, more emotions are better than less. Uh, great example is this game three is that unlike games that came after this one and uh, totally cloned uh, its uh, its mechanics uh, uh, it's all about creating adding little decorations uh, puzzle game abstract one with numbers and stuff but there are so many subtle touches like those small faces that you may see here when you match cards and turn them into these kind of creatures and there's a beautiful uh, page on uh, Asher Volmer the developer of the game website uh, which recaps all uh, the different design choices that have been taken throughout the development of this game and there were so many different versions for trying to achieve the perfect uh, I would say, uh, emotions through, through, through this game. Uh, we trust uh, in simplicity, uh, speaking of which, think of all the one button uh, games. Uh, so if we say to a player, oh, it's a very simple game, you just can play this with one button, we may gain the trust of the players uh, uh, very easily. And this is one of the one, one great example of a one button game called the Cannabalt, which has been ported to basically every possible uh, uh, device. And failure, some things can never be made simple. So there's a whole in the, in the indie games uh, scene, there's a, there are many examples of, I would say, anti games that try to uh, tackle rather than simplicity the total uh, complexity. This game here is uh, uh, a playable version of uh, the Library of Babel by Jorge Luis Borges. Uh, so you have an infinite uh, library full of, uh, of, of books uh, which are scattered with complete, uh, like, meaningless uh, text. Uh, the one, the last uh, rule of Maeda is what we feel like is the main takeaway of this brief uh, uh, talk that we had, uh, which is the one. This, this rule here basically sums them, uh, sum, sum, sums them up all. So simplicity is about, is about subtracting the obvious and adding the meaningful. And we think this is a great lesson uh, also for uh, game design and game development uh, as a whole. And again, these uh, were the 10 uh, Maeda's rules, and we thank you very much for your attention. Thanks again. <laughs> yes, we have like a couple of minutes for questions, otherwise we are right outside here uh, with, with, with the game. Yes, okay. Okay, see, see, see. in termini di generi quindi uh, devo rispondere in italiano posso rispondere in italiano non so come ah, ok ok in termini di generi quindi mm -hmm. uh, secondo me eh, appunto hai, hai fatto degli esempi rispetto ai generi eh, un'idea interessante è proprio quella anche di mischiare eh, genere con magari un tipo di interfaccia che normalmente è applicata magari a un altro tipo di genere, l'esempio di, eh, di Reigns che facevo, che è un gioco diciamo molto eh, narrativo se vuoi, perché hai tutta questa serie di personaggi che ti si presenta, questa saga medievale, sei il re di un regno, ma l'interfaccia di gioco è eh, appoggi il dito su sta carta e swipe da una, da, da una parte o dall'altra, a destra e a sinistra, quindi un'interfaccia 
eh, super semplice che potrebbe essere adatta a un puzzle game, un casual game, un casual game applicata in questo caso a eh, invece una materia complessa, narrativa, ricca e piena di riferimenti è stata ad esempio una delle chiavi del successo di un gioco come questo quindi eh, regole non ce ne vedo vedo al contrario magari tante opportunità di combinare le cose in maniera differente proprio magari anche semplicemente combinando appunto interfaccia di un certo normalmente applicata a un certo genere a tutt'altro genere scusa l'ho andata velocissima quanti secondi? Sì, ok so. Siamo qua fuori, gioca qua fuori, grazie a tutti.